inform you of how I became to be a girl. The process was lengthy and different to other years, only to be lengthened further by all the bank holidays over Easter, but that couldn't be helped. We were all told that we had to write a letter of application and a CV for the first stage. Everyone handed theirs in, and a few weeks later, everyone received an email, either successful or unsuccessful. Those who succeeded were given dates of the next three tasks that we all had to complete before the group was cut. There were 15 girls and seven boys in the next ages, so the competition was very tough, especially for the girls. Our first task was a speech in front of some, member, some members of the staff, the head boy and head girl, and a few members of the school council. We were only told the topic half an hour before we had to deliver it, so we only had that designated time to come up with a speech to wow the judges. It was stressful, but the teachers wanted to see how we dealt with it. For me, that was the hardest part. The next task was the whole group doing problem solving. That was great, and I just showed them who I was. I worked hard and I had fun. The third task was team building, and the clues in the name. We worked together as a team to do different tasks. After all, all those tasks were finished, the teachers involved with them got together, added up our scores from each task, and they decided who went through. Like before, we were all told, we all had an email and saying basically if we were through to the interview stage or not. Six girls and three boys were in the interviews. I was petrified. I ran every single scenario through my head. I just thought, what if I failed? I'm just not crying in front of Mr. Griffiths. What if I did okay and I was become a deputy? Or what if I was to do really well and become the head girl? The latter scenario seemed impossible. I just didn't think I'd do it. I was so nervous when he came to the interview. It was with Mr. Griffiths, Mrs. Oakley, a governor, and Mr. Osborne, the chair of the governors. So I was so nervous, but it was how I dealt with these nerves depended on how I did. I answered the questions they asked. I smiled and nodded a lot, and that basically got me through it. And when I went back for the results, I was even more nervous. I was standing there shaking. Once I knew I had it, I was ecstatic. I jumped, skipped, ran, sang down the corridor. It was amazing, and I urge you all to apply. You're here tonight for a reason. You've won an award and you should be really proud of yourselves for doing so. I hope I've given you something to aim for, so that in a few years' time, Year 7s, um, I hope that you can be standing here, as proud as I am of myself, my school, and of you, the prize winners. Well done, and good luck for the future. Amy Langridge. Tegan Stock. You don't need to hear me talk or hear anything about me, but you judge me because I wear a hoodie. This bit of material sewn together with a bit of string makes me someone I'm not, makes me a bad person. A new rule came about in 2008. No hoodies allowed in government buildings so that, or indoor recreational areas, so that it includes pubs, like indoor leisure centres, or government schools. So what was to happen now if I walked into a pub where am I hoodie? Everybody quick. <laughs> Football and rounders. Charlotte Finch, the rounders. <laughs> <laughs> 